Hi, my name is Steve and today I'm going to go through a video demonstration of the Adobe Sign Web Portal. I'm going to take a document, I'm going to send it for signature. I'm going to go through and show you what the recipient will see and they can go through and sign that document and I will also show you what you receive back at the end of the process. Now today's video demonstration is designed to be just a high level overview of Adobe Sign and if you did require more of a technical deep dive into the Adobe Sign web portal, perhaps some of its more in-depth capabilities, please do seek out some of the other videos I've recorded on that. But for today I'm going to keep the demo very, very simple. So with that, let's get started. So here I am in the Adobe Sign web portal. This is an Adobe hosted website, which you would log into using a username and a password. And we also support single sign on as well for your organization. This is our send screen. And in order to send a document for signature, we need to provide an email address. So I'm gonna pop this in here now. And this is a fictional person. Her name is Jane Taylor. And I have access to this email address, which I will be using to sign our agreement. And we can have a number of different roles inside of Adobe Sign. So by default, Jane here is set as a signer, but we've also got approvers, acceptors, and certified recipients. And these three are largely the same. It just determines how Jane is gonna be represented on our audit report at the end. So it might say Jane has approved our document. She might also have to accept, I don't know, maybe some terms and conditions if we're sending those out. And she can certify that she did actually receive a document. So maybe if you're sending out a welcome pack, perhaps. If Jane does not need to sign a document, but still needs to fill out a form, perhaps capturing details like first name, last name, email address, etc., we would give her the form filler role. And finally, we would ask Jane to delegate someone else to sign our agreement if we did not know who the final signer is going to be. And the use case for that is if you need a signature witnessed, perhaps. We're just going to have Jane signing our agreement here. If we need to prove that Jane is beyond a shadow of a doubt the person that we needed to sign our document and she is indeed who she says she is, we can have her enter in some details using one of our different authentication methods. So by default, Jane will just be clicking a link in her email. That's enough to identify her. However, on top of that, you may want Jane to enter in a password that we can set here. You may want to force Jane to log into a social account, perhaps. You may want Jane to receive an SMS to a mobile device, enter in a six digit PIN that's provided, and then use that to unlock our transaction. You may want to force someone to sign into an Adobe Sign account, so that's useful for internal use cases if you know someone has already got an, a, a, an Adobe Sign account. And finally, what we are able to do now is able to force someone to upload a scan of a driving license or a passport and have that verified. And we can tell beyond a certain threshold of certainty and probability that that is a valid piece of identification. And if yes, they're allowed to go through and sign our document. If no, they will have to try again. So for now, in just today's demo, we're gonna have Jane clicking on a link inside of an email. So I'm going to upload our files that we're going to get sent for signature now. And I'm going to grab something inside of my laptop here. So I'm going to browse in just a second. But uh, Adobe Sign does have a library template section where any documents you send for signature on a regular basis, get them stored in your library and they will be inside your account waiting for you, whichever device you are sending from. So let's jump into this computer now. And I'm going to grab something from my demo docs folder. I'm going to grab something that has no form fields on it at all. This is a straightforward Microsoft Word document, and I've simply left spaces where we would like our signers to sign. I'm going to get this uploaded now, and I'm going to tidy up the agreement name here. So we're going to be signing our cover sheet. Please review and complete the cover sheet. Kind regards, Steve will be the message. On the right hand side here, we can lock down the final PDF that comes back at the end of the process. This is PDF security. Underneath that, we can set a deadline. Let's go for seven days. And if Jane had not signed our agreement before the 16th of May, 2019, unfortunately, this will cancel our transaction and we will have to start again from scratch. 
For the reminders, uh, let's go for every business day. And Jane's gonna be reminded that she politely has a document waiting for her to sign. So everything looks good here. Let's check it over one last time before it goes out. Jane will be signing our cover sheet. Now we've only got one file in here, but we are able to send multiple files for signature. And we're able to mix and match file types as well. In today's demo, it's very simple. We just have a Word document, but you could very well have a PDF combined with a Word document, combined with maybe a JPEG graphic scan. Um, as well, forming some of the pages. And what will happen is these files will be combined together and you will get back a multi-page PDF. I mentioned that we didn't have any fields on our document. There's nothing fancy going on at all. I've just left spaces. And if I check this box at the bottom here, this is where we're gonna have to upload our files. And I'm gonna drag and drop fields onto our file. So with that checked, I'm gonna press next and our document is uploaded to Adobe Sign. So here is the preview screen. And if I scroll down, here are the places where we would like Jane to sign. So on the right hand side, I'm gonna grab a signature box. I'm gonna grab a date field. I'd like her to enter that as well. And I'd also want her to enter in her name. There's a lot we can do with Adobe Sign Forms here. And if I show you that we're able to grab, uh, here's a, a text box, for example. We can have drop down boxes, check boxes. Here's a group of a couple of radio buttons. And we can even have someone upload an image. Perhaps useful if you need to onboard someone for a, maybe a badge, you can take a head and shoulders photograph uh, and capture that at time of signing. And you will also get back that JPEG or, or whatever file format they choose to upload. Let's just clear these out here. And we're just going to have Jane enter in her name, today's date, and of course a signature. So I'm gonna press on the blue button here and this document will immediately be sent to Jane. So our document has now been sent for signature and it was as simple as that. We're free to close our browser and continue on with our day. Let's now jump over and see what our signer will see inside of their email inbox. And you can see Jane has an email inside of her inbox. Let's open it up. And these are the out of the box Adobe Sign email templates. And there's quite a lot we can do with these. We're able to change the branding in the top left hand corner to add your company's logo. We can remove all mentions of Adobe Sign should we need to. And we can even add in a custom footer. So maybe you've got some uh, social icons or perhaps a privacy policy you can drop down there. Not a problem at all. We get a nice large thumbnail image of our document. Jane's message that we sent to her appears here. And Jane clicks on her link and is taken straight through to signing. Now what just happened there is that Jane was not asked to enter in any passwords or usernames. We don't force anyone to sign up for an account. If you've never heard of Adobe Sign before, that's not a problem. You will always be taken straight through to this signing screen. And if you're on a mobile device, perhaps if you're signing using one of our apps for iPad, uh, Android, iPhone, uh, if you're in any, pretty much any modern HTML5 web browser, this signing screen will look largely the same. And what we get is this nice yellow tag here that follows us down our document as we scroll. It's guiding Jane through to where she needs to sign. So if I pop a click in the box here, you can see we're presented with the four options for signing. The first of which is we can use our keyboard to enter in Jane's name here. We can draw our signature using our mouse or perhaps a trackpad here. Just gonna do that now, JT. The third option is to upload an image to represent my signature. So maybe that's a squiggle on a wet ink piece of paper perhaps and use that to represent our signature. And finally, we can send an SMS to a mobile device. Take that device, turn it sideways, sign using my finger, submit that signature, and it will come straight back to this laptop so that we are able to continue. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type Jane's name and press apply. Jane's name has been applied to this document now, and she's ready to submit this. We can see the black bar along the bottom of the screen here. 
But I asked the question very quickly, what would happen if Jane did not want to sign our agreement? What would happen if there was a mistake perhaps and she was not able to give her sign off on this? In the top left hand corner, she has some alternative actions and she can choose I will not e-sign. She'll have to enter in a reason, click the blue button, and of course, this will cancel our transaction, but we will receive an email notifying us that this has happened. However, on this occasion, Jane is happy to sign and she clicks on her blue button and the document has been signed. So our document has now been signed. Let's have a look at some of the emails I've been receiving in the background. So here I am in my email inbox and you can see I've received an email from Adobe Sign. And this is what we call our signed and filed email. And this is our notification that tells us that everyone who we needed to sign our document has done so. The document has reached the end of the process and is safely and securely stored inside of my Adobe Sign account. However, what is attached to this email is a courtesy copy of our document. So let's double click that and get this opened up inside of Acrobat. Now I'm using Acrobat Pro DC, but it's the same as if you're using Acrobat Reader as well, the free version. And, and what we get along the top of the screen here is a blue bar. And this will certify that this is a secure encrypted PDF, the contents of which have not been modified in any way and there is a third party certificate attached to this PDF. And if you don't see this blue bar along the top of the screen, you will know that you're not looking at the original document and it may very well have been tampered with. Scrolling down, our signatures are in place and if we click on them, we're taken away to the Adobe Sign Verify service as well. So we can get a little bit more information about that one signature. However, what Adobe Sign has done for us is it has appended a page two to our agreement here. And page two is what we call our audit report. And the audit report details all of the events that took place in our transaction, right the way through from when the document was created by me, what time it was emailed to Jane, what time she viewed it, because we capture that as a step two, what time Jane signed it, and finally, when it came back to us as completed. Notice that we capture dates, we capture times, we capture email addresses, of course, but we also captured IP addresses too of the devices that we use to sign. And should you be signing using our mobile app, we will also ask to capture the GPS coordinates. So what you will get back is the latitude and the longitude of exactly where on earth that signature took place. It is the audit report that you should require. Should any of these signatures be challenged in a court of law? And what we've got here is all the little bits of evidence to say, okay, Adobe is able to stand with you and say, we were able to capture Jane's intent here to sign our agreement. That was the Adobe Sign web portal. And I hope you agree it's a very, very easy to use interface there. I took a document, sent it for signature, and I showed you what the recipient will see and how easily they are able to go through and sign that. Finally, I showed you our audit report and how we're able to tie the process up nicely, showing that it is legally binding. So now I would urge people to seek out a 14 day free trial of Adobe Sign and try it out for yourself. See just how easy it is to get up and running, sending documents for signature using Adobe Sign. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.